Torres and Marisa, if they will come up here also, please. I had a wonderful time last night. I thought it was over. Amen. Actually, uh, as you know, you want our co-pastors. You know, when we're, when we're not here, when pastor's not here, they take over. You know what? And they do an awesome job. You know what? And we want to also recognize them, you know what, for, for their faithfulness. You know what? For their steadfastness. You know what? They've always been there. They've always said yes, you know, no matter what. You know, they, 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 they're just got servants. You know, they have that servant's heart. One of the things that I just wanted to share with you is a pastor. You got pastors. Uh, thank you for your passion for God's uh, people, for advice and, and godly counsel, your sacrifice of time and energy teaching of God's word, obedience and faithfulness, responsibility to shepherd us, you know, that is, uh, that is what a pastor is, you know, the synonym, you know, the, the acronyms, you know, the, uh, of what a pastor is. Not only that, it, a pastor's heart is protective and guards the flock from Satan's uh, uh, snares. A pastor's heart is attentive and seeks to know his people's cares. A pastor's heart is sacrificial and for his sheep, he will give his all. A pastor's heart is tender and listens to the Spirit's call. A pastor's heart is obedient and heeds the master's command. A pastor's heart is reflective and considers he is but a man. You know what? A man that follows after God's heart. You know what? And that is what these pastors have done. You know what? Throughout these years, throughout the, the shepherding us, you know what? Growing up, you know what? That's what they've done. You know what? They've called, they've heeded the call of God. You know what? And they, and they listened to the spirit of the voice of, uh, the, the voice of the spirit of God, you know? And, and we thank them for that, you know what? For their sacrifice, you know what? Because it takes time. It takes a lot, you know what? Out of them, you know what? Uh, to, to shepherd, you know what? To shepherd us, you know what, uh, in, in every way and in, in, in everything. At this time, I would like to ask the Sister Miranda, Brother Michael, uh, Sister Joette, Brother Dewan, Sister Martha, and Brother Arnold to please come in, and they will be presenting some gifts. Wow. <laughs> oh, you come over here. <laughs> Amen, amen. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Amen. Uh, so we got some gifts that we're going to present to you, but I'm going to read what's on this clock, Jeremiah 315. And I will give you a shepherd. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, and I will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And this morning, I just wanted to say, um, I'm going to bring it open, open it up. What well, was Joshua 5? 13. When Joshua was near the town of Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with sword in hand. Joshua went up to him and demanded, are you friend or foe? Neither one, he replied. I am the commander of the Lord's army, and this Joshua fell with his face to the ground in reverence. I'm at your command, Joshua said. What do you want your servant to do? And this, this scripture was on my heart for you, Marty, because I know you don't do this for recognition, but right now we're taking time to recognize both of y'all. And I, it just makes me it's so excited because I just know you're ready to go to war for your kids, ready to go to war with your family, ready to go to war for your church and anyone who counters. And I know you say I, sometimes you make the tough decision and you're all like, I know I may be mean. No, I love it because you're, are you friend or foe? And in that instance, you're ready to start. If you're, you're against us, move out of my way. If you're for us, join my army. We're gonna do this together. <laughs> and anyone that knows Marty is always on fire. That fire is contagious. And even though you may not say it, but your actions say everything, Lord, I'm at your command. What do you want me to do? And I know you told Pastor, I have your back. I also know as, 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 you're, as you're speaking into us. And that's all you do the best. You always, anybody get a country, you pour in. You speak, you speak, you speak, and you speak. I want to say we have y'all's back in anything that you need. 
And also, just to add on to that, uh, Sister Maddie's favorite phrase when we have our meetings is, run with it. And we're like, okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to also thank Pastor and every all the leaders up here, but the anointing that trickles down from you guys to you guys, we feel it also, and we're under y'all's covering, and we love it, and we will keep running with it with you guys. We love you. <laughs> and then now we have more gifts um so just real quick i want you know y'all are leaders so y'all are leading the charge you don't do it for yourselves you do it because you care about our souls and i don't know if you really understand the impact that you're having on everyone out here but know that you're doing the right work and what you're doing is enough don't doubt why you're here, the Lord strategically placed y'all in this position because y'all are the right people to do the work. So you are enough and you are enough because God is continuously guiding you and giving you the wisdom and helping you build the relationships, which is touching people. So keep that in mind. Y'all are good soldiers. You're not getting entangled in all the other things that can happen when you're at war. Y'all are kingdom minded. And because of that, we're following behind y'all. Not because we love y'all, but because we love God and you're, no, you're in alignment with God is telling you to do. Amen. So just walk away knowing you're enough. Amen. Wow. And continue to listen to the voice and you will be just fine. But we, we are grateful on, on behalf of just coming from me um, and everyone else. I know everyone probably thinks the same thing. It could come across as a very thankless job, but you're doing it for the right reason. So we thank you for caring about our souls. And this is for Pastor. It says uh, it's the same scripture. So thank you, Pastor Jimmy Solis, for serving the Lord uh, from the Rock of Revelation. And the two words that stick out to me here, it says knowledge and understanding. So I just want to share that for over 20 years, you know, Pastor has been leading this church. Uh, and I can tell you, we get fed very well here. Okay. Uh, for some of you that are new here, I would tell you that there is no need for you to go and look anywhere else because you have found the house where you are going to be fed and you're going to be fed well. Okay. Uh, the wisdom and counsel that he has provided me uh, throughout the years, uh, he has never led me wrong. Uh, and I can tell you if there is ever any question that you may have, any need that you may have, uh, when you come to pastor and you ask, the advice that you're going to get is going to be spot on. It's never going to be incorrect. He will never lead you astray. And like I've always said in the past, I've always been, like I said, you don't like Cougar and Mighty and Caleb and Abe. Uh, they don't know how good they have it, you know, to have a father, you know, like pastor. I said, because there are so many of us, even I had a good father, right? But there are so many of us here that maybe didn't have that. And uh, to the four of y'all, y'all are blessed. But for everyone else here, we are also blessed because he is our, you know, here's our father here also. You know, we have our heavenly father. Uh, but here, you know, I, he's my go-to, whether it be anything that's wrong with my boat. Uh, whether it's anything, uh, any, any questions that I may have, uh, prayer, you know, he's there for me. One thing that I can say about pastor is that he's an active pastor. He is not a behind the scene pastor. Okay, and what I mean about that is, especially with the men here, is that he just doesn't offer things for the men in this church, such as conferences and, and, and Bible studies and fellowships. It would be easy for him just to have those things offered and for him to be absent. But he's right there in the line with us, you know, you know, and when we go to a conference, you know, he's our leader and we follow. And I just want him to know that he's never, ever alone because there's a lot of men in here that will follow you, Pastor, wherever it is that you tell us to go. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. God bless you, everyone. I, I uh, it was beautiful last night where we got to honor our, our pastors. And, and one of the things that I mentioned yesterday was my brother and, and Marisa, that they've always been there for me since day one. And, and they've always had that pastor's heart because even before I was even saved, 
uh, even before I had stepped foot on, on a church, my brother was ministering to me as a brother. As a brother, I loved his sister and wanted her saved. And, and he, uh, there came a time when they opened up their home to me. And at that time, it's not because I was a sister, a flesh and blood sister, but at that time, it was like a women's shelter that they had there because they were ministering to other women that they opened their home to because they didn't have a place to go. And it, it was funny because I was, it was like three of us ladies there, and we were just, uh, Mari would take the time. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, Mari. It's so long ago, over 20 years ago. But they've had that, that desire for souls and for the Lord, and, and, and um, literally she would sit at the table with me and, and study the word with me. My brother, uh, my, my little girl, she was about maybe three years old, and she had her Bible in her hand waiting for her Theo to get home so that we, she, he could read her the, the Bible stories. Wow. And, and um, they've guided me, and I love you guys uh, be, for being there. You've always had that pastor's heart, and you've stood. And, and through the years, I've seen you stand like pillars and, and, and be there for so many of us that needed you. And, and Pastor, um, I always remember the, the mission statement when he was building the church. One of the words that stuck out to me was uh, a, a house of refuge, because at that time, that's what I needed. And that's what so many of us needed, and, and a house of refuge. When you think of the word refuge, and I know my, my, my husband and I are going through some things right now, uh, and, and, and that's when we need that refuge. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Glory. Amen. Glory. And, and it's like, um, I know he just spoke to some of the men, and, and it's just things that, not, not as a, where we're divorcing or anything, but things that we go through, life, <laughs> life, <laughs> medical issues. <laughs> not but you know what, that refuge, <laughs> That refuge, health issue, <laughs> but that refuge of, of, of a covering of prayer, like in, in a refuge, what do you find? We, you find a covering, and, and that's, that's what we need, and, and that's what we've always needed, a covering of, of prayer, of, of, of being together, and, and, and having people just stand with us, and, and Pastor and, and Sister Peggy have always been there. Sister Peggy, she's always behind the scenes and not really wanting... I, I, like we have kind of like, I, I um, really relate to her because we have kind of this, the similar personalities of being introverted and quiet and just being not really wanting to, to speak. But, but I just want to honor you today too uh, for being there and for everything that you do. That scripture that's found in Proverbs 31 where it talks about a woman of godly character. Amen. That's what you are. And, and through the years as a young single woman, You've been such a godly example to me because I could see what I needed to do as a, as a, as a godly young woman and how to um, preserve myself for the Lord and how to carry myself because, of, the, because of, of how you carried yourself. Because sometimes you don't know that other people are looking to you because you're, you're a role model and you had been a role model and you cared also about my, about my, my, my character and and you always were there to provide, whether it was, hey, let's go to this conference as a young woman and me listening and putting me in that, in that atmosphere where I was going to grow up to, to, uh, in, in the ways of God to be an example to other young ladies. And I thank you for that because the, the, that chapter also talks about her husband and her children rise up and call her blessed, and you are a blessing. You are a blessing, and you are that, God, that woman that it t talks about in the Bible where you have that character of kindness. And, of, of, and you, when you speak, you speak, speak words of wisdom because you're firm, you have a firm foundation in God. And I thank you for being that anchor, for being anchored in God, and for giving me that example as a young woman. I thank you for that, and I honor you today, too. And thank you, Pastor, for stepping in and being that not, like my husband said, that spiritual, not just spiritual father, but also like an earthly father that I didn't have growing up. So thank you for being that example, and we honor you today, too. Thank you. Amen. Guys, go ahead and sit down real quick, please. No, it's okay. Listen. This is the type of pastor that we have here. I, I, I looked up to him, you know, I was a young man, straight out of the Navy. Mal. <laughs> you know how it is, you know, just not, not right with God. But, you know, this pastor will see the best in everyone right here. 
no matter who it is. He's not going to judge you because he sees you through the eyes of Jesus. And Jesus, when he looks at us, he doesn't look at where we're at. He looks at where we will be. And that's the part right there. Because when, when the pastor sees you of where you could be, he will begin, begin to set a track for you to meet certain uh, um, signs or, 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 or uh, goals to head that way and to help you along the way to become the man that he knows, the woman that he knows that you are. And that's the type of pastor that, that, that we have. You know, when I asked a pastor for his daughter in marriage, you know what he asked me, the question he asked me, some of y'all know, but some don't. But he asked, do you love Jesus? He didn't say, do you love my daughter? He asked, do you love Jesus? And I said, yes. You see, because he knows that when you have the right relationship with Christ, everything else falls in place. Doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. You know, God doesn't look for perfect people. But he looks for people who have a perfect heart towards him. So along the way, we will make mistakes. We will get it wrong. But we're not going to stay there. We're going to continue going the right direction that he has for us. So this is the pastor that we have, a pastor that's going to encourage you, that's going to see you all the way through. And that's why people enter here a certain way. But just wait a few weeks, months, years and that's not the same person that came in that one day, the first time. They come out different. People like my sister who couldn't talk in front of people at all. And look at her now. You know, people like myself who didn't have a good father, who had a lot of hate, didn't trust people. I didn't trust anybody. You know, I had to grow up like that. Because growing up, when I trusted people, tr people hurt me. And so I learned at a very young age how to keep myself safe, which meant I didn't trust. But the pastor taught me how to trust. He taught me how to love. He taught me that it's okay if you're going to be taken advantage of, you know, because I did, I was going to be, I was, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, no me van a hacer mal. Maybe some of y'all have that mentality. I mean, no me van a hacer mal nadie. But you know what? He's working under him also because he, he was also my boss at, at the, uh, when we would sell cars and people would come in and I would see the way he, he would res respond to them. And parecía que le hicieron mal. You know, people that would buy a car and they would say, no, this is trash and blah, blah, blah. And the pastor would just take it all in stride and, and he would sometimes re refund the money. And you would think, man, you know, like, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Who knows what they did to the car when they, when they left here? It was fine. But he always trusted in God. And that's the part right there, guys. When we trust God, it's true that saying will come true. Nadie te va a hacer mal. Nadie te va a hacer mal because God will make it all right for you. Amen. I just, I just, I just wanted to share, just share a story that, um, I, and I know that everyone came, came in here and Pastor is going to give a good word right now. But I just wanted to share a story because he was sharing how my dad was a, a car salesman. And uh, we went to go eat lunch with my Aunt Martha. And uh, it, Cougar makes me laugh because Cougar, I think it was Cougar said that he's the most honest car salesman that you would ever find here in San Antonio. 
<laughs> he was the most. And then, uh, so anyways, he said that he had a suburban. Well, actually, my aunt said, she goes, I don't know if I've ever told you she's a missionary in, in Mexico. And uh, she says that she was blessed by a suburban that my father had blessed them with because they needed a vehicle. She said that she had just been praying that day. They were coming to San Antonio in a broken down vehicle. And she was praying coming from from um, Mexico to San Antonio, praying that, that the Lord will open up a door. They needed a vehicle to go back and forth. And they didn't have money. And she says that when she finished praying, almost right when she finished praying, that she got a phone call. And it was my dad. And he says, Martha, do you think you can, you can use a Suburban? And she was like, yes, yes, we could use a Suburban. Like the Lord answered her prayer. And then uh, she goes, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever told you that story. And then my dad says, well, let me tell you what happened. He says that he had a Suburban and that he had it in the front parked and that um, some kids or somebody came by and they shot up the Suburban. And he fixed it up, and he put it back up to sell again, and they shot it up again. And then he says, you know what? All right, devil, you want to be doing this? I'm going to turn it into a blessing. And then from there, he gave it to my aunt. My aunt not even knowing anything that was happening. But this is the type of person that the Lord, the Lord uses my father. You know, he's like, instead of getting upset, instead of getting uh, uh, angry, he's like, you know what? I'm going to turn it into a blessing. <laughs> so I just want to, and, and if you don't see it already, this is the type of pastorship we have here, you know, where they love. And they, it's actually pastor's appreciation day. It's his day. It's his day. It's their day. But I thank you, Dad. I thank you, Sister Peggy. I thank you, everyone, for your kind words. I just feel so blessed. Thank you, and God bless you. Amen, amen. If we can stand to our feet this morning. And um, we don't know, Pastor. Pastor is the type of guy that whatever you need, he'll be there for you. If you need prayer, he'll show up. He's also here on the grounds, always uh, doing whatever needs to be done. And one thing that uh, you don't know about Pastor, Pastor usually doesn't ask nobody for nothing. But he's here for you and he's willing to pour into you. And so we want to take this time. If uh, a lot of times we we go get we pour into Starbucks, we pour into McDonald's, we pour into the the taco place across the street, you know, and uh, you know it, it, it benefits us in that in that moment. But we want to take this time. If Pastor has blessed you, if Pastor is uh, spoken to your family, and this is your house, what does it cost? And you know we just want to take this time to to just plant a seed for Pastor. And I know he um. He doesn't, he's not asking for money. And he's not, he doesn't, all pastor cares is that you show up with your family with an expectation to receive the word of God. But we want to take this time to say, you know what, pastor, we thank you with our hearts, with our service. And if you have any way, if you, if you cannot plan a seed, plan a seed of service or plan a seed of showing up. But if you can financially give this morning, we would like to say, you know what, plan a seed. And so we just want to take this time to pray for our pastor, pray for our church, uh, pray for the ministry, pray, pray for everybody. This, um, but this is plan to see today. Dear God, we thank you today for everything that you're doing. We thank you for the type of pastor that we have who, who's willing to give his clothes off his back, who's willing to share the word, who's willing to pour into our house, who's willing to, to do anything he needs to spread your gospel, God. And we want to take this, this time to, to give our seed for the kingdom, to further the kingdom, for Pastor to go out and share the word more, to, for Pastor to provide for the ministry here, but for anything that Pastor's need, God, we want to take this time to say we love them, we thank them. Well, God, we just pray for your church and your family here. As we give, we say thank you, God, and multiply it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I praise God for his amazing people. Amazing lives, you all. An amazing flock. Thank you. 
amazing servants my wife Peggy an amazing wife my daughter I, I could just go on but you know those are closest to me that you know help me run the ministry Marty taking care of the Sunday school ministry and the sisters ministries that are you know she takes them pretty much totally on her on her shoulders and it gives me the um, time the freedom to seek God in his word and I'm up in age from where I started at 28 but uh, I, I don't feel any older as a matter of fact because of the people that, that hold up my, my arms like they did to Moses, amen? And, and everybody that supports here does that. Everybody that, you know, is, is here to just make this ministry go on does that. And it, your presence here, you know, it, it's just a strong support to, to my ministry and my life. And I thank you all. I thank you all for that because... It'd be a calling of God upon my life regardless of how many or how few or how much help or some or how much didn't help. It would still be a calling on my life to do it. Do you understand? But it's such a blessing to have you all. Such a blessing. Your support. Everybody. And, and everybody unique. Everybody unique. Everybody distinct. Everybody in a special way, you know. Some on prayer night, some on fellowship, some on, you know, the, the ministry of helps, and some when the church is not even open, they'll be here. Amen. It's just all kinds of amazing people that God has sent our way, and uh, I totally, totally delight in, in the blessing of the Lord that comes through this ministry unto you because I know that God loves you so much. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Are you all ready to get into the Word of God? I'm ready too. Amen. And, and, and we're just going to go to Isaiah 10, 22. Uh, I'll jump right into Isaiah 10, 22. They'll put it up there on the screen. I'm sure there, there it is. Boom. Just catch it from up there if you can. For through thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant, that's a part of a bigger piece of people, right? A remnant, how many know you're a remnant of very many more, amen? A remnant from your family, a remnant, you don't know how many you represent here as a remnant, yet a remnant of them shall return, you see, not all of them, but a remnant, and the consum consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness, for the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even determined in the midst of all the land. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. For yet a very little while and the indignation shall cease and my anger shall turn to their destruction. And then it goes, and the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. As his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass, watch this, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from thy shoulder and his yoke from thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. If you can't tell yet, we're still talking about the anointing of the Spirit of God. In which it finishes here by saying that the yoke of the enemy shall be destroyed because of the anointing of God, amen? The yoke that is heavy, the yoke that is burdensome, the, 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 the yoke that is a yoke of bondage that the enemy 
would put on the people in those days. And now he puts on so many through so many of the things that are in the culture. If you see drug addiction, you see the yoke of the enemy. If you see poverty, you see the yoke of the enemy. If you see alcoholism, immorality, the bondage of sin is a yoke of the enemy. And that is the yoke that shall be broken because of the anointing of God. Do you understand that all those yokes that I mentioned, they're all candy-coated yokes for the most part. They're all uh, pleasurable in sin. They're all things that come to people promising that they're going to be gratifying, enjoyable, and they're going to feel good, taste good, look good, and all that kind of good, but then they deliver bondage, right? And you know, when we as a church, as a body of Christ, come to try to match up against all those uh, uh, baits of Satan, traps of the enemy that wind up putting people in bondage. And I speak to a people today that I know they know what I'm talking about because we are here because we've been set free from that yoke. Amen. After the manner of Egypt, that the Pharaoh had us in that bondage, but the Lord came and set us free through his son, through the lamb, Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you haven't been set free, it's here right now. Glory be to God. But I, I, I tell you today that as, as, as a people, as we, as we are here and as a church, in, in, the, in the outer part of ourselves, uh, the enemy has so much more. I mean, they, they, they got millions, billions, trillions. They got Hollywood, they got Motown, they got, is this still around? I don't know, it was, that's what, that was what was around when I was in the world, amen? I, I like Motown, amen? And, and that's what I would listen to and, and so forth, and man, it was attractive, and it had me, it had a hold on me, and, and I said, man, I, I, this is what I like. I don't like that over there, you know? And, 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 I, and, and I was bound, and, and, and you know, if, 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 the, if the church would have tried to say, well, look, sometimes they would, you know, like uh, the Mexican music. I, I, would, I really wouldn't go into the Tejano music. I was more into other stuff in the world, you know, other types of music. But sometimes the, the Spanish uh, uh, Christian music would try to imitate the Tejano music. And they thought we would, I was going to say, oh, look, it's, I can go there and, and it's just the same. Or, or the, the, the rock, Christian rock would try to, you know, kind of imitate the, uh, the worldly rock, and I was going to go and say, no, man, that, that, that other stuff was what I like, all the bad stuff, you know? And they, they, the, the, in other words, the church was no match. Even though all the gifts and all those things come from God, but the church was no match with the amount of uh, just productivity and, and, and the amount of money and the, and the visuals and and all these things that the world had, if, if, the, if, if the church goes, you know, toe to toe and say, well, we're going to, and you know, now we're living in a time when the music in the church, my gosh, and, and uh, I mean, you go to a concert at the AT&T Center, and, and it seems like now, you know, they're, 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 they're not behind, man, they can go toe to toe. Pretty much, even some of our Christian music sometimes being played on the, on the secular radio, it's that good. Right? Now, okay, times have changed a bit. But guess what? It's still, the power's still not in there. Because the world still has more. More places, more bands, more everything, right? In that area. But one thing that we have, hallelujah, and the Lord mentioned it, you know, when he said it's not by the power of that money, it's not by my, but it's by my spirit, hallelujah. The church has the anointing of the spirit of God that can break every yoke. Are oh, y'all hearing this? Out there, everything's candy coated, but everything comes in bondage. Even their entertainers, you all know, probably saw the Elvis movie. Elvis was, you know, born in a Pentecostal family, raised up, and, 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 and you know, the, 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 the money is candy-coated, and, and the attraction, and, and the fame, you know, his yoke was candy-coated with fame. It was candy-coated with money. It was candy-coated with good looks. It was candy-coated with, with women, all these kind of things, amen. But at the end, you know, I mean, I thought he, I was, I was uh, like 20, 
four years old when I was in Missouri and just 50 miles away from, from where he had just died and the news came there and the farmer told me, hey, do you know Elvis just died? And I thought, you know, Elvis, man, well, he's old as anything. So I was in my 20s, <laughs> you know. What, I thought, like, why did he die of old age? I had seen him. He was big. And, 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 and oh, it was drugs, you know. But, you know, I was dumb in the world. I, I thought I was getting old at 24. So, you know, I thought he was real. No, no, he died young. No, he, he died in, 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 in that bondage of drugs, right? He died in, 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 in everything that was candy-coated, didn't he? He died short of his calling. Only God knows, I pray to God, he had a chance to call out to Jesus. Amen? Only God can judge that. But I know that the will of God was not fulfilled because the yoke of bondage held him till the last day of his life. The yoke of bondage was upon his life, you know, and it's what brought him down and ended his life early. What promised to deliver and what was maybe the admiration of every young man like myself to, to one day, oh, if I could be like that. You know what? You, you can kind of, you know, admire them for a while, but then when you get the full look at it, it was all bondage. You are candy coated with fame and, and the glory of, of this world but ending with destruction. Didn't it happen? That's an example of so many. You could go from him. You could go, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of Mexicans. I don't know how Antonio Aguilar wound up, and, you know, but I know he was a whiskey drinker, amen, which is uh, kind of a, the weakness of a lot of Latinos, man. I mean, you can go to Whitney Houston and keep on, and if there be any agents here, maybe I bring up Bruce Lee or something, amen? But it, it, it's like, it's a equal opportunity destroyer, the yoke of bondage. You know, it's not racist, it just destroys everybody. And, and in the midst of what people do, and, and, and also God's people, you know, which is our children, you know, and, and, and ourselves also, in the midst of, you know, the rod of God's correction does come. And when I bring something up like that, it's just to understand that I'd rather be corrected by the word of God and by the truth of God than by having to experience the bondage myself. Or have you experienced it? Don't, don't, don't try it personally. Don't find out the hard way. Don't, don't learn the hard way. Take God's word and God's truth for it. And you would have avoided a lot of pain and suffering and possible destruction, right? Amen. I'm going to be talking about choosing the anointing of God. Because the anointing of God, it is something that you have to choose. That's why I pray God give us revelation that now we can make the right choices. Amen. Somebody asked the other day, they called and said, you know, wait, well, brother so-and-so, I'm not, not even say the name, some brother he said. Uh, believes that we can listen to all the worldly music. I said, well, you know, think about it. I mean, what's it going to give you? I mean, don't argue with the person. It's all right, you know. But you choose what music you, you can. You can hear music that is tangible to the anointing of the Spirit of God, right? Or you can choose music that is more tangible and useful for the flesh. Which one do you need? Do you understand? You can choose to be in an atmosphere like you are today, you know, that, that is charged with the power of the Spirit of God as the people have praised Him, right? Or you can choose to be in another atmosphere that has not one iota of the power of God, but all the glory of man and whatever, and say, well, it's all right. Well, is it beneficial for you? You see, somebody said, we are a product of our choices. I will tell you, our products are also, you know, coming forth out of the choices we make. Are y'all hearing this? If you want to produce something good, you get into something good. Amen? And talk about good, man. Your children, you that have children, you better know that your children are like sponges. In whatever atmosphere you place them in, they are going to absorb, right? In whatever attitude you have and whatever example you have, they're going to absorb it. You may tell them 
you know, do what I tell you, and they're not going to necessarily do what you tell them. They're going to do what you do. Are y'all hearing this? Amen. You see, you have choices. When you do something, you better know that your choice is going to affect what's in the spirit. You have a choice to be in something that God anoints. Something that is tangible for the spirit of God to operate and bring forth blessing for your life. Are y'all hearing this? Because eventually, as God was talking to the people, he was talking about the anger that he had. Mm -hmm. the, and God himself said, talks about it, right? The rod that he used on the people was for their correction. But it was about to turn and be used for the destruction and the consumption of the enemies of God. I believe we're in a transition like that right now. I believe there's so much bad, so much evil. And believe me, this is part of how the grace of God operates towards his people. The Bible says that when sin abounded, grace overabounded. We're living in such a time right now, and this truth that we're about to read and are reading today, they apply right now in our situations in this day, even possibly more so than when they were written. There's yokes out there that can be broken by psychologists. You see people homeless in a place where there's many helps, right? Many helps. You see people hungry in the land that is most blessed of God. You see people in cages like animals when we're living in prisons and jails, when we're living in the land of the free. You know, if they were out here living like poor people, they'd be living better than 90% of people in other countries, right? That kind of insanity, it just doesn't make sense. It's not logical. It's something spiritual. And for something spiritual, you need the anointing to break those yokes. Do you understand? You could try to do it with your hands. Not, I mean, they can build habitat for humanity. They, they can have the Sam shelter. My sister, I mean, retired from the Salvation Army over there. She knows what I'm talking about. You never finish with those. And, and sometimes it's not that the help is not there. The people just, there's something in their mindset that is in bondage. And you know what? There's no amount of psychiatrists medications, you know, uh, antidepressants. There's no amount of stuff that can heal that. It's only the anointing of God that's going to break those yokes of bondage. That's what the yokes of the Assyrians and, and, and the Midianites and, and the Egyptians represented upon the people. It was a bondage that only God could break. But they had choices that they had made. Do you understand? that had made them. And God, I believe, as he mentions his anger towards his people, and if he is angry at us in some area of our lives, it's not so much that he's angry at us. He's angry at the ignorance. He's ag angry at, 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 at the bondage. He's, he's angry at, at, as to how we would allow the enemy to enslave us in any area of our lives or to weight us down in a yoke of bondage that, he can, that we cannot run the race that God has placed before us. Right. Are y'all hearing this? Yeah. I believe his anger right now is turning towards those things and he's about, he's about, I believe that's why we've been talking about the spirit and the anointing because it is our greatest weapon yeah. to set ourselves free and to set free. Everybody here has somebody. That you're saying, I don't know how God's going to do it. Some in a terrible relationship. Some I've, I've prayed with and for recently, and I don't know how God's going to do it. I just know that the Lord says that the yoke of bondage is going to be destroyed. It's going to be broken because of the anointing of God. Do you understand? 
I, I, I did not know how God was going to save that one. I didn't know how God was going to save that one. I know the anointing of God does something. Yes. Not too long ago, there was a young man, and, and then for, before that, there was an older man, and, and they claimed to be unbelieving atheists and so forth. I said, well, put, place him in the anointing. Bring him in here for a little while. I don't know how God's going to do it. But before you knew it, they both became believers. Before you knew it, you know, things change. I don't know how God's going to do it, but you get him in the atmosphere. I'm telling you, you get him under the anointing. I'm telling you, you get them under the spout where the glory of God is coming out. Hallelujah. And what comes out of God is much greater, a million fold than whatever's coming out of the world. It don't matter how many channels uh, that the world has. If God just has one channel for the anointing into some person's life, and that channel happens to be your life. Woo, you got to trust in the anointing of God. How many believe in Jesus? How many believe that he is the Christ? That means he's the anointed one. Jesus Christ is, Christ is not his last name. It's who he is in your life. He's a fountain of spiritual anointing and we're going to tap into him in your life in your life for people around you amen and your church glory be to god yes yes you see we're a product of, of our choices or, or i could say our products are here by our choices that's why god gets angry he said he was angry at israel he allowed him you know to be taken uh, a captive into babylon right there in that story you know, they're, they're, they're just returning from Babylon or about to return, you know. And it's a remnant coming back. Not all of them. You still got to, how many know you still got to set a bunch of people free? They're still out there in Babylon. They're out there in Egypt. They're out there in Median. They're out there, you know. In some place of bondage. Spiritually speaking, not, I'm not talking ge geography. Amen. Talking all the types of bondage, some in alcohol, some in drugs, some in immorality, some, some are even clean cut and everything. They just don't have no God in their lives and think they're doing all right. And they're not. They compare themselves. I mean, all of us compared ourselves. You know, when I was a drunkard, I said, well, at least I'm not a drug addict. You know? <laughs> then I started doing drugs. I said, well, at least I'm not stealing from my drugs. You know? Pretty soon I'd be stealing from my drugs and I'd probably be saying, well, at least I haven't killed nobody. And then it goes on and on and on. But everybody justifies themselves in themselves. And I'll find somebody else worse. But we're all in bondage without Jesus. We're all in bondage without the anointing. And even some that, like, they, they were the people of God. And they'd been taken off in, in, in slavery again. But the Lord was about to deal with that. And the Lord's going to deal, and he's dealing with some things. And he's brought you here because you're a remnant. So there's going to be a remnant that returns, and you're the remnant that has returned, and this word is coming to you. A remnant was like, like in the times of Gideon. Remember uh, Gideon, I mean, he rose, uh, he rose up, and eventually, you know, God dealt with him. And, and 32,000 men gathered around him, and then the Lord said, that's too many. Right? And 22,000 that... Uh, he says, all the ones that are afraid, because he says right here, fear not the Assyrian. And it wasn't the first time he said that. Don't, don't be afraid of the Assyrian. So he says, and he, ask him if any of them are afraid. 22,000 went back. Amen. So what does that leave? About 10,000. Then he takes them and he tests them another way. That pretty much, you know, how they drank water. If they were still on alert and ready for battle. Well, guess what? Another over 9,000 went back. And only 300 were, were left. Now you got a remnant. You know? So those 300 represented 32,000 soldiers. Not to mention Israelites that were probably in the millions. That's how small a remnant they were. God said, okay, I can use that. You think we're very few? And God saying, I can use that. You think you're being the only one in your house? God said, I, can, I, use, I started with one Gideon. I can use you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this, this is a personal word for each and every one of us. 
You know, I, I can't feel like, oh, but there's mega churches. No, this, this guy can use this. I believe he cut us down from a mega church to a few people that he can anoint. Just how he did with Gideon, right? And uh, we're still all scared. You know, we got to get the fear out of the camp. They better call the ones that are willing to believe what I'm saying and follow my word. Are y'all hearing this? Amen. Because look, look I'm telling you, we're, they, were, they were a product of their choices. That's why we're talking today about choosing the anointing. Because the anointing, you know, it comes by choice. Are y'all hearing that? The anointing, I've been speaking about it for three weeks, right? But I might flash back because the anointing is the power of the Spirit of God coming upon us. Do you understand? And it's all connected. Messages aren't left behind. They're still here. So we need, we need the power of the Spirit of God to be upon us, to be upon our prayers, to be upon our thoughts, to be upon our faith, to be upon our, 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 our service unto God. Amen? Because when it wasn't, they went the other way. A matter of fact, uh, it, it's there in, in Judges 6.1. This, this is how they wind up in bondage. This is how they wind up. It, just so you'll know that, you know, the, the situations have been, wherever we need to repent, hey, we all lost years, we all lost times, and there's still some time that we're losing in our, in our Christian walks. Amen. Let's repent of that if we, if we want the power of God. Don't be afraid to sacrifice a little because you're going to get a lot. Sacrificing a little time. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Look at, look at how it happened because, because he did say that he was going to do according to the slaughter of Midian in verse 26 of the opening scripture. Right? Midian, it talks about the times of Gideon and the bondage that they were under the Midianites. So I'll go back and see what he's talking about in Judges 6, 1, where it says the children of Israel, how'd they get there? They chose to do evil, right? Nobody here? No. They chose to do evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. Thank God that his wrath is but for a moment. Right? Amen. That's what the scripture says, right, brother? His wrath is but for a moment. Thank God that he is slow in wrath, but he is great in mercies. Right? Thank God that it's only because he has to allow it because people make some choices. We're talking about choices, right? Some are candy coated. That's why I like it. Some are traditional. Oh, all my family does it. You know? So I've been there a long time. Oh, that's the way I am. That's the way I've always been. I'm going to say like this. Okay, that's your choice. Right? right. right? Some more inherited. Oh, my, my grandfather was angry, and my, grand, my father was angry, and my great-grandfather was angry. That's why I'm angry all the time. Okay. That's your choice. That's your choice. Oh, you want to break that yoke of bondage, that generational curse? I'll make that choice. You want to break... You know that, that chain in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Oh, Gideon's a perfect example. That's why the Lord said right there to his people, I'm going to do like the days of Midian, yeah. like I did. So let's, we're going to the days of Midian, right? The days of Midian, they, they made wrong choices. But that's right now people make wrong choices. Not because they like to be in trouble and bondage and in, and in slavery, because it was candy coated and the devil is a liar. Oh, you're hearing this. So, okay, the hand of Midian, verse 2, Judges 6, verse 2, and the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made of them dens in, which were in the mountains and caves and strongholds. Man, they were hiding in caves. Okay, and it was that Israel, and, and, and so it was that when Israel had sown, that means when they had planted, well, I'll just paraphrase through it, then, then the Midianites would come and steal all their harvest in the harvest times. You know? And, 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 and we're Christians and sometimes we gain and the enemy comes to steal. Well, that's going to stop in the name of Jesus. You know? And if we work a lot and get a little, well, that's going to stop in the name of Jesus. How's it going to stop? By us making the right choices. How's it going to stop? By us giving God what belongs to God. Are y'all hearing this? Oh, yeah.
here. Is that all right? I believe it's the truth of God. So, you know, they would come down and they would steal all their harvest. If they'd grown cattle, they'd steal their, their oxen and their sheep and everything they would steal. they just wait, let them work. Sometimes the devil, if the devil's treating you like that, you better listen real good. Working, 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 and the devil comes swipe it all up in the name of Jesus. We're going to break that cycle. We're going to break that yoke. But you got to believe the word of the Lord. This is not my word. So they made those choices. They wound up in that cycle. It was a cycle every year. Right? But it came to where they had to make changes that sometimes were scary. But you can't be scared. You can, you can check this preacher out. Amen? You can pray as the Holy Spirit is this your truth for my life? You can do it. Gideon did all that. You know? He just wanted a confirmation that it was God speaking to him. Right? You know the story, right? But once you see it's God and it's the truth of God, you are responsible to make certain changes. Just watch where he wound up at the change right here. You know, and, and finally believes God in 624. So Gideon builds an altar for the Lord after the Lord calls him, right? And we're going we're gonna to go back to that too. So he built an altar there and, and called it, it's in verse 24, and called it the Lord is peace. To this day it stands in, in Ophrah the, 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 uh, of the Abyssinians. And, and then in verse 25 it says, the same night, the same night that he built an altar, you know, the, the same night the Lord said to him, take a second bull from your father's herd. And, and, and one seven years old, and tear down your father's altar to Baal. That was the God of the Midianites. That was the God of the Canaanites. That was the God of the... What in the world is he doing there with the Israelites? Are y'all hearing this? Out of the word of God? Sit up there so you know I'm not making it up. Amen. So tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. That was one of the, of the goddesses that they worship, Asherah. And all that mess is right there. What does that represent? All the idolatry that somehow infiltrates. Uh-oh. Put on your seatbelts. It infiltrated the camp of God. It infiltrated the people of God. Where it's at, it's better you recognize it because the Lord says, I'm going to do a cleanup. I'm, I'm going to restore you. I'm going to break that cycle. It's what you got to do. It's what you got to do. And some of y'all, it's in the religious spirits that have been around your camp, you know. You don't, you, don't, you don't pray, you don't pray, you know, to idols. I'm not called to pray to idols, you know. Don't go picking up fight with anybody. No, no, no. But sometimes the fight will happen by itself. Right? I mean, show your good intentions and struck with meekness, like Paul told Timothy. But if God tells you, you know, don't you be going over there, you know. Now, when I was a child, I'm in this area. I lived on the west side, you know, most of the times. Uh, near west side, but west side. And uh, this area right here was known for curanderos. Spiritistas, all of them people, right, my, my family, you know. You know what, they're probably still all around here, you know. You ain't got no business going to Doña Tonya. <laughs> Even if it, if it gave you relief from your backache the last time, you got no business going to Don Roman. You got no, you letting in the devil. If it's not by the Holy Spirit, if it's not by the anointing of God, if it's not, and sometimes they'll even use falsely the name of Jesus. Hey, I'm on the side, on the side of Santo this and Santo that. Tear down the Asherah pole. Tear down that altar of Baal. If you're going to set up an altar for me, Gideon, you better tear down all those altars. Oh, no, it, 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 it gets clearer than that. Tear down the altar of politics. 
Tear down the altar of men. Tear down the altar of idolatry, of idolizing men. Tear down, no matter, you, hey, don't, don't, idol, don't idolize a bad man, but don't idolize a, a good man either. Are y'all hearing? Are y'all hearing this? You're going to go the wrong way. Because the devil will try whatever he can. It's got to be God. If you're, if you're forsaking the word of God, the character of Jesus, because you're following a good man, oh, this is what I prayed for. Well, you prayed for the wrong thing. You take, for example, we got to be praying for people's hearts to change. More than we pray, uh, good laws, thank God for good laws. I can preach to you here without being stopped because of good laws. But you know, I'm, I'm not going to worship that good law. And if they were to take it away, I'd still preach. Amen. If they were to make prayer illegal, don't bother me, I still pray. Right? It's good to have good laws, but I'm not going to idolize a good law. You know, we got a good law now, abortion is illegal. You know what, I'm not going to worship that either. Because if you don't change the hearts, that don't even matter. You got to change the hearts of deadbeat fathers that go around making babies. You got to change the hearts of foolish Ladies that go around giving themselves to people that don't love them. Are y'all hearing this? You got to change the heart of the people. The law ain't going to do enough. It's just another battle in the flesh. You know, it's good to have an advantage. It's good to have money to pay the bills. But you know what? If I didn't have money, I'd still preach the word of God. Amen. If we didn't have this building with AC, I'd preach it without AC. Right? Uh, i Thank God for those things, but I'm not going to idolize those things. Are oh, y'all hearing this? I thank God for good government leaders, but they're not my idols. Amen. I, don't, I thank God for good laws, but they're not my laws. You're getting closer with the Asherah poles now, right? Because if it's our Asherah pole versus the Babylonians Asherah pole, it's still an Asherah pole. You know, it's still Baal. Idolatry is idolatry, whether it's that way, whether it's in religion. Amen. Wherever it's at, are y'all still all right? So it got hard. It said, tear down the pole and build, verse 26, build the proper kind of altar. Can y'all see that in the word of God? To the Lord your God on top of this height. Using the wood, you burn that thing up, use the wood of that pole you cut down. Offer the second bull as a burnt offering. Amen. Hallelujah. So God was setting them up and we opened by saying, the Lord speaking and saying, I'm going to do as I did in Midian. You know, that's the way I'm going to do, right? Leading up to the anointing. Leading up to the anointing. Are y'all choosing? Well, you've got some choices to make. You got some choices to make. I've heard some people, I'll be, I was amazed. People had served the Lord so long. Said, oh, yeah, tuvimos que ir allá con una sobada y whatever. With some spiritualista, you know, spiritualist. What they call them. They're all over here. Amen? You don't go to them. You pray for them to get set free. And many of them have. And some of them are even here saved now. Amen. Praise God. We love them. We hate the sin. We hate the darkness. We hate the bondage. We hate the idolatry because God hates it. But we love what God loves. Amen. Praise be to God. So where does, how does he set them up? How does he set them up? Well, they, remember the sound of the anointing? When they got 300 men... In Judges 7.22, the 300 trumpets, you know, that they are given, they're told to, to give a sound to them, right? Remember the sound of the anointing? That's what went out. The power of God was released from their trumpets, and their lanterns were broken, and the light of God shone forth, right? And the Lord is saying, because of the anointing, that he's going to do as the days of Midian at the Mount of Oreb. Remember in Isaiah? And it shall come to pass that the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. But all of that follow through. Y'all still all right? We all come from the same places. We all been in bondage, okay? Preacher's not saying that because he 
step down, stay away from heaven. Amen? Takes one to no one. I never tried spiritualistas or anything like that. I, I just never got that kind of dumb, but I had all other kinds of dumb. All other kinds of stupidity. I had worse ones probably. You know? But I was in bondage. Amen? But some, some people are Christian and they still think they can go there for quick relief. And you're, 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 you're going to fall into bondage big time. Uh, uh, I don't want to scare you, but some are even gone now. Because the, the enemy promised quick relief, but delivered with death. It, it's true. I know for a fact. Believe me when I'm telling you. Do not go playing around with that mess. Do not go making a deal with the devil because he, he's going to give you a little money or a little love or whatever. They've gone for that too, amen? To make somebody love them or whatever. It's not good. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm not making this stuff up. You would think I don't have to say it, but I have to say it. Because I find out that people of God as these people, isn't it ridiculous that they had on a chair pole of the people that would come and, and rob them? They had an altar to bail the God that they would worship. Isn't that crazy? But they had it, right? Amen. Well, that, that doesn't change. The enemy is still the same. It's, he still comes in there, and if the light doesn't come forth, because when the light came forth and the trumpet sounded, I'm just sounding the trumpet, hallelujah. The Bible says... Well, the Bible says, watch this, watch this, 722. When the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other. How many want those devils, hallelujah, of drugs to turn on each other, amen? How many want those spirits to turn on each other? How many want those demons that we can't defeat, hallelujah, but the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God, through the tearing down of those strongholds, hallelujah, I'm just telling you what we got in the spirit of God, in the anointing of God, and the word of God is instructing you in how to release it. Because when they were instructed, they sounded their trumpets, hallelujah. And they declared the sword of the Lord and of Gideon, hallelujah. And the Bible says that the light shone forth. I believe there's light in this house. If you can understand, the light is on in this house, hallelujah. If you can understand what the word of God is saying, it's because the anointing of God is granting it unto you. And right now, the light of God is going to pierce the darkness in the hearts of those that you're praying for. And it's going to set them free. I'll tell you, the devils don't know what to do when the spirit of God enters and they start tearing each other up. Just like they did at the Mount of Oreb in the days of Midian and, and Gideon. And the Lord said that because of the anointing, that's the way it's going to happen. Why? Because of the anointing, the yokes were going to be broken. Are y'all hearing this? Out of the word. Amen. So the army fled to Bethsaida and towards Zera, And as far as the border of Abel Mehola near Tabath, the Israelites from Naphtali, from Asher, from Manasseh were called out and they pursued the Midianites. And once they were left, and Gideon sent messengers throughout the hill country of Ephraim saying, now who's chasing who? Amen. I said that. Now come down against the Midianites and seize the waters of the Jordan ahead of them as far as Beth Bera. So the, all the men of Ephraim were called out and took the waters as far as Beth Haran. And then in verse 25, it says, And they also captured the Midianite leaders. Amen. The chief demons that were, 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 would represent to us. We bind them in the name of Jesus. We bind those. That, which are the chief demons right now? Is it drug addiction? Which are the chief demons? Is it alcoholism? Which are the chief demons? Is it, is it immorality? Hallelujah. We bind them. We've been given the keys of the kingdom. And we bind them. Hallelujah. Because the Lord said that in his name we would bind. And whatever we bind on earth will be bound in the heavens. That means in the spirit realm. Amen. Glory be to God. We're going to use what we got. How many want to use what we got in the word of God? I mean, no, the routines of religion are going to give you this. This is just faith in the word of God and what God says. He will do. He will do. 
by his spirit, says the Lord. Amen. So, let's go back to finish the reading. They captured the leaders, Oreb and, and, and Zeb, and they killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb. Amen. Amen. According to the slaughter, where, where, you go back to verse 26 of the opening, I said he would do it according to that. So you know what I'm talking, he was talking about that. In verse 26 of the opening scripture in Isaiah, he said that he would do according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of war. He's telling us that, that he can do it again. He's telling us that. You know, sometimes the division is in the people of God. You know, we all, we're always going to have differences, but don't let it be differences that divide us. Oh, yeah. oh you understand? It? Because the Lord said, if we touch agreeing whatsoever we ask, yes. Yes. find place to agree. How many agree in the name of Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, that's enough right there to have a foundation so we can come together. You're, you're hearing this? Amen. Now, when we touch agreeing, then over there in, 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 in demon world, there's going to be division. Such division. You know, that it's going to drive them crazy and they're going to tear each other apart. In the name of Jesus. We just got to let the anointing of the Spirit of God, the light of God. When that light shone from those lanterns and when the sound of the anointing, we talked about it three weeks ago, when out of those trumpets, the victory belonged to the people of God. Do you see it? Hallelujah. So they, they pursued the Midianites and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon, who was by the Jordan. And the Lord speaks of that. He says, I will do as I did in the Mount of Oreb in Midian. Hallelujah. They captured him. But you, you, you got to know, you got to know that you have a part in your choices. Like I started by saying, you choose what is tangible for the anointing of God. Are y'all following? So I'm just going to talk of a couple or three things that are, that are very important that you have so that there can be a, a flow and a tangibility to the Spirit's anointing of God in your life, in our life, in our relationship with the Lord. This needs to be there. Because we need yokes to be broken that only the anointing of God can break. Right? Anybody agree? If not, if you're a break-it-yourself kind of guy, well, um, okay. That's your choice. We're talking about choices. I will tell you it's not going to work. Because the devil's bigger than us, but he's not bigger than our God. Hallelujah. And we come to find out we all want to believe in miracles. That's why people go to the Spiritistas. Amen? But we, none of us want to be in need of a miracle. Because it's hard to be there. I know, I've been there with a bunch of you. Praying for a miracle. And you know what? God has done it. God has done it. But it don't feel good to be in need of a miracle where the doctor, well, that's all we can do for you. Or, you know, there's as much as we can do and we need a miracle. But you know what? God is a God of miracles. But when the people of God in, in the times of Gideon were in bondage, you see, the miracles weren't happening that were needed to happen just to set them free. And you look in the Bible, right? And you see the miracles, right? You see the manna in the desert. You see the rock you know, flowing with water in the desert. You see the Red Sea opening, the miracles of God happening in the times of Abraham, in the times of every servant of God. You see miracles, right? And then you come to the New Testament and you see the birth of the church and, 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 and you see the, the, the cripple walking and, and the blind seeing and, and the dead being raised, right? And, and you see all those miracles in the Word of God, right? And, 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 and sometimes in our own lives, we get in a place where, you know, we realize what we should have realized all along, that it's been God's miracle power that's been holding us up. Yeah. And it's been God's miracle power that will take us forth, right? Yeah. But the people 
when they stray from the Lord or when they give God, you know, a little and fail to give God what belongs to God, really, they can, the people of God can wind up in bondage. Are you all hearing this? When, when they give a priority and, 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 and they have a lot of idolatry in their lives and, you know, consider all that idolatry worth more their time than, you know, hearing God in their lives, it's going to show up sooner or later, not because I want it, because that's the way it is. Right. Are you all hearing? Yeah. Throughout the Bible, that's the way it is. And the altars to Baal and the idolatry, and, and it might not be religious idolatry. It might not even be drugs. It might not even be alcohol. It might not be an obvious sin out there. It's just something that takes the place of God. Are oh, you all hearing? That's what idolatry is. And, 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 and the enemy doesn't care if it's that hard, bad, bondage, obvious, that even, even the heathen know you're in bondage. Amen? Even they know. Now, they don't have to be that. They're, they're bondage that's in a stealth mode in many people's lives. We want to break it because it's there to keep you from the miracles and the blessing of God. But that's the way they were. And, 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 and uh, if you look at it, when, when, when God first approaches Gideon, you know, through his angel that he sends to talk to Gideon before the, before the great victories. Look at how, what happens when, in, in Judges 6, 4, where, where he's approached by, by the angel, and the angel addresses him as a mighty man of valor. And, and Gideon says, what do you mean? What are you talking to? And, and, and how can you call me that? And, and then he says in, in the fourth verse, Gideon said unto him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, because he said, the Lord is with you, my if the Lord be with us, because the Lord is with you right now, it don't matter what your situation, amen. If the Lord be with us, that's why he gives you revelation and understanding, amen. But Gideon said, how can the Lord be with us? You may be saying right now, you don't know what's going on with my son. You don't know what's going on with my marriage. You don't know what's going on. You know what I got to go back to right now when I leave the church. Well, you came to the right place. Amen. Came to the right place. You don't know what I'm facing. You look like, oh, they're doing your pastor's day and all this kind of stuff. You're all happy. We all, we all go through some stuff. Amen? So Gideon, he's getting addressed by, by, by the angel who's telling him, the Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. And Gideon said, what? You may be saying, what? So Gideon says, what? Gideon said to him, oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? Is it up there? And where be all? Watch this. I'll put it in modern jargon. Where are the miracles? That's what Gideon is saying. If the Lord is with us, why is this happening? If the Lord is with us, why did this happen in Ovalde? If the Lord is with us, why is there something like that happening every week, sometimes more than once? If the Lord is with us, why are people killing themselves on the street? If the Lord is with us, I mean, I'm just bringing it to modern times, how we might, might put it, you know? We might. Some of us might. If the Lord is with me, how come is my home is like that? If the Lord is with me, then why... Did that happen to me? Right? Well, that's us. That's us. That's us, Gideon. Right? Hmm? So, he says, the Lord is with us. Why, why has this befallen us? And, and there's the key right there. And where are the miracles that our fathers told us about? Is that not what he says? Right? I'm just paraphrasing. So we can all say the same thing. It's all right. It's all right, but when you ask, you better listen, because that's why this is being preached today. Amen. Where are the miracles? The miracles, my beloved, are in the choices. That's what we're talking about, choosing the anointing. This, are y'all listening? Amen. We make choices 
that produce every day, every day, whether we want to or not. You know, we make choices. Well, if we want the miracles, we got to make the choices that correlate with what God's going to use to release this yoke-breaking anointing. Right? Isn't that right? Isn't that right? You make a choice when you turn on the radio. You go listen to something that contains the word of God or you're going to listen to something that tantalizes the flesh. It's your choice. I'm not telling you what to do or what not to do. God doesn't either. But he just tells you, I lay before you blessing and cursing. I lay before you life and death. By the way, choose life so that you can live and so that your descendants can live. Wow. Isn't that simple? And yet God says, I'm pro-choice. Mm-hmm. You choose. So, the miracles are in making the choices that God can use for your life. As Christians, I believe we should always ask ourselves, how is this choice? How is this choice going to affect my pursuit of the will of God? You know? How is this choice going to affect how the Spirit wants to operate in my life? Right? Gideon said unto him, Lord, if the Lord be with us, why has this befallen us? Where are all his miracles that our fathers taught? Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt, they say? The Lord said in, in Isaiah, I'm going to do as I did in, in Egypt. And now the Lord has forsaken us. The Lord has forsaken. No, they have forsaken the Lord and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. But you know what? The Lord was so merciful, so patient, that he's, like he stays with us, still talking to us. You know, you see, the greatest miracle, the majority here, has already happened when you chose Jesus. But you know that was a choice, right? A choice you delayed. Maybe a choice you waited on. But the power was always there waiting. Before you knew you needed salvation, the Lord had already died for your sin. But when you made the choice, hallelujah, salvation, the greatest miracle, hallelujah, manifested in your life, right? But it would never have happened without you making the choice. Isn't that right? And that choice is available for the whole world, for the worst of sinners. Amen? Amen? And it's already happened. It happened, and, and that's what the Lord called it, after the manner of Egypt. Like when he brought them out by the, by the slaughter of the lamb and the blood of the lamb, they were delivered from death itself. So, hallelujah, the Lord heard the affliction, you know, that was in Egypt from the people. And he sent, you know, a servant. He sent Moses. And Moses, uh, you know, he led them and, and instructed them. And finally, you know, uh, you know, the cry of, of bondage that was there, the Lord said, it's too much. I can't stand it anymore. I got to go in there and deliver them, you know, from their bondage. And, and, and he brought them out by grace, by a slaughtered lamb, and he opened the Red Sea, and they crossed on dry land, and then he closed the Red Sea, and he destroyed, hallelujah, their, 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 their slave masters and those that had them in bondage, right? He did that when we cried out to Jesus, when we got tired of our sin, because believe me, some people you're praying for, they're not going to cry out till they're tired of their sin. So don't, don't keep enab enabling them necessarily all the time, amen? Don't, don't, don't be babysitting their children so they can go out and, 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 and give the devil another opportunity to kill them out there in drunk land. Are you all hearing this? Amen. Tell them, no, don't go out. You got kids, stay with your kids. There, there, were, there were people here in the house of the Lord that had to be told that, you know what? Bring the kids, but also bring the parents. Right? But you tell them, I'll take care of your kids, but you're, you're, I'm not going to take care of them so you can go to the club. Amen. So you can go around the streets of San Antonio and risk being in the 10 o'clock news the next day. No, ah, that's not what we're here to enable. Let them feel the burden of their sin so that they can cry out to Jesus. 
Because when they cry out in an ugly situation, we made a choice and cried out. And the Lord delivered us from our Egypt. And because of that choice, it wasn't pretty, but it was a choice, right? But we cried out. And the Lord heard us and delivered us from our enemies. Praise be to God. The Lord said to the Jews that believe him, you know, if you continue, though, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and, and you shall know the truth, and, and the truth shall make you free, right? Right? It will make you free. Blessed be the Lord. Hallelujah. So you got to continue. Following the word of the Lord will bring forth miracles. Amen. Following the word of God. The word of God is tangible for the anointing of God to bring it to pass. Now you follow, like the Lord said, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, you're going to see the anointing of God move in your life. Amen? You're going to see it, I mean, in time, in season, and out of season, the way this preacher is called to preach, you're going to see it happen. Where are the miracles? You know, ask Gideon. Well, we're looking at the Bible. Where are the miracles? You know, people came, came to Mary, right? Some people, uh, well, if you still pray to Mary, I mean, I'll just tell you this. I'm not going to get after you, but if you pray to Mary, wait around and see what Mary tells you. Amen? And if you pray, my sister Mary, I'm not talking about you, Mary. But Jimmy and Mary, there's no power in our names. There's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But if you do pray to Mary, here's what Mary will tell you in John chapter 2, verse 5. This is what Mary said when they came to Mary. When you go to Mary, listen. And this is what she'll say. It she said, his mother said to the servants, whatsoever he says, pointing to Jesus, whatsoever he says, do it. And that's in verse 5. By the time you get to verse 11, it gives you bottom line results. The beginning of miracles. Because the question was, where are the miracles? Right? The answer is in doing what Jesus tells you to do. Do you see it? That was the very beginning of miracles. Wow. Now the word of the Lord, the word of Jesus, you know, it comes through Jesus, right? You can look at the Bible the, the way you want to look at it through your own spirit or through a man's spirit or maybe a big old headed theologian spirit. Amen. But let it go through Jesus and what he did and let it speak to your life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because Mary said, whatever he says, whatever Jesus says, do it. Because if you don't go with Jesus, you're going to find your disqualification. You're going to find your condemnation. You're going to find, you know, your sin. You're going to find your barriers. You're going to find everything that stops you from believing God. But if you hear it from Jesus, hallelujah, the one that died for your sin, the one that paid the price and the punishment of everything that you deserved, amen, when you go to Jesus and you do the word of Jesus, you're going to get your miracle, hallelujah, because the Bible says that this was the beginning of miracles. Are y'all hearing this? Amen. We're talking about the, 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 the question that Gideon answered because the Lord said, I'm going to do as the days of Midian. I'm going to do as that time that Gideon, you know, was approached by my angel. That's the way I'm going to break the yoke of bondage. We need those yokes broken in the name of Jesus. Well, we're going to do it by the word of the Lord. We need to hear the word of the Lord. The name of Jesus Christ carries the power of his anointing and its authority. You have to know this. You have to know this in what I call your faith knower. Your faith knower. Some people have faith, but I don't know. There's some knowledge, revelation knowledge missing from their faith. So you put this in there in how you believe God. In other words, that the name of Jesus, and I call them Jesus the Christ. That sounds kind of weird, right? Because we say Jesus Christ like if Christ is his last name. Right? 
But you remember when, when Jesus called Peter blessed? It was because Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Christ means anointed. And Christ means anointing. And we're talking about choosing the anointing. So that's why I'm saying you got to know this in your faith, Noah. Because it dissipated off of Peter pretty quick. But I'm trying to nail it down in your spirit. That when you use the name of Jesus, the Christ, you're using the authority and the anointing of the Almighty God. Are you all hearing this? The name of Jesus the Christ carries the power of his anointing and its authority. Amen. I know one of my sisters told her daughter, just say in the name of Jesus. Because she knows there's power. She maybe didn't explain it this way, but now I'm explaining it more. Use the name of Jesus. Use it believing that there is power in the name because there is power in the name of Jesus. Because he, you're not talking about a Mexican Jesus. You're talking about Jesus the Christ. Amen. Jesus anointed one. Distinguish it in your faith and in your knower. Amen. And the way you distinguish it, it is by knowing that that's the anointing that you're releasing in the name of Jesus. You've been invited that whatsoever you ask in the name of Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one. Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he said, you shall have it. Hallelujah. How are you going to have it? Because he is the anointed and he is the anointing that is flowing in his name. When you say it, say, oh man, it's not because of my family name. It's not because of my name. It's not because of my good. It's because Jesus is the Christ and I know that he died. I know he suffered pain on his body and by his stripes. I am healed. Somebody say, somebody needs to say by his stripes. I am healed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. The anointing flow right now and touch Whatever needs to be mended and give you the miracle that God sends because the name of Christ carries power. Now that releases, and we're talking about a few things that will release the anointing of God that comes to break the yoke. Are y'all still all right? Y'all still all right? All right. Because not my fault. They were honoring me and all that. Amen. Honoring us. Okay. I still got to bless you with what God gave me to bless you, right? Amen. Amen. The name of Jesus. Another thing you got to know that releases the anointing, not because I say because the Bible clearly, clearly, if the Bible clearly says it and it has not dropped into the faith knower, what I've been, I invented that word, that we know in our faith. In other words, if, if you don't know this in your faith, you're not applying it. Right. You understand? But when you know it, then you... Now when you say the name of Jesus Christ, that name's anointed. Carry spiritual power right now, devil. Amen. You demon. And a lot of times you know you're dealing with a demon. Because the sin and the bondage and the ignorance is so great, it's supernatural. Amen. You know you're dealing with supernatural evil. So you get supernatural good. Amen. And what is holy of God. And it's going to overcome that supernatural evil. Amen. Do you understand? It's a real battle we're fighting in these days. There's a lot of bad. It's worse than Vietnam War out there. They killed more people in, in Vietnam throughout this country for nothing. Just because the devil's having his way. Bind it in the name of Jesus. And I decree that it will not come around your family. Because you're here as a remnant to, to be used of God. Do you understand? But you don't have it unless faith comes by hearing it and hearing by the word of God. So now this comes and gets installed in your faith. Check it out real good. Don't take in there anything that's, that's of man. But if you check out the word of God. That this is the way it is. The name of Jesus carries power because he said it. And religiosity, which is in the name of Jesus. No, this is, this is powerful. Amen. He is a Christ. Amen. He's not just another Jesus, not just another name. He is the Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Exercising his power that he said that the Holy Spirit would take of what is his and make it known unto us. 
Amen. Hallelujah. So, he nailed that down. The name of Jesus. Use it. Amen. Next. Where you seek, because unity is good, right? But a lot of the evil powers out there are united. They assemble, they unite, they protest, they do whatever. Right. right? And in the eyes of people, they have to be listened to, and they set an order out there. Where you seek unity in the presence of God, where you seek your unity is a choice. Do you understand? What you choose to connect to is your choice. Okay, so where you seek unity either connects you or disconnects you to the anointing of God. Are y'all hearing this? Well, you know, there's some people that are saved and they like to go clubbing. Disconnect from the power. By the grace of God, the devil don't kill them out there. But they disconnect from the anointing, right? They choose to be here. There's lesser places than that. that. That would be obvious to most. But there's other places that just aren't anointed. You know, even your spirit's telling you, get out of here. Amen. You know, Amen. even your heart's saying, oh, man, I hope this ends soon. You know, don't let that happen here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because where you choose to unite, well, if it happens here, here, let's deal with it. Come on. Let's deal with it. It was taking too long. But it don't take too long for you to watch the Cowboys later on, and some of you are worried about them already. We'll pray for them. <laughs> Amen. You're in the right place. They need you to be here. <laughs> Amen. They need you to be here praying for them. It's like a curse on them every year. Amen. Probably a yoke of bondage needs to be broken over them. Amen. Where you unite, you, you, maybe you wish you were in Texas Stadium or what's it called, the Cowboys Stadium. You ain't gonna get nothing there. Even if they win, they're not gonna send you nothing. God's sending you something right now. We're talking about connecting to the anointing and choosing. Because we make choices, right? We make a choice, hey, we choose to be here. Have no anointing, you're all dried up, you don't even feel like praying or hearing the word of God. Because you've been saturated in, in uh, embalming juice from the world. Amen. You're walking dead. And you better take it easy. Psalms 133. Psalms 133. Let's just read it. Get in the word. Let God tell you. I can't tell it too good. God can tell it real good. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Are we united? All right. It's a beautiful place to be. It is like the precious ointment. This is the oil. This is the anointing uh, upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard. He was a high priest. He's a symbolic of Jesus that went down to the skirts of his garments. And as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, and for there the Lord commanded the blessing. Where there was unity in the name of the Lord, Zion is a place the meeting place where God's people come to meet and hear God. Amen. He says it's like an oil flowing down and the Lord there is going to command blessing and life everlasting. Amen. Do you see that? It's right there in the word of God. So where you seek to unite is a choice that either connects. How many want the anointing of God? You want the power of God in your prayers. You need the power of God in your lives. This is who it's for. This is who it's for. I know I need the power of God in my life. This is going to be my favorite uh, uh, uniting place all the time for the rest of my life. It's been that for 39 years, and it will be for every day that I live the rest of my life. You know, when I'm not here, my heart's going to be like longing for the house of the Lord. Amen. When I'm, it's time to come here in my flesh, it may be distracting, wanting to ride the bike or go fishing or whatever. Amen. But in my spirit, I'm going to hear, you know, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Even if my flesh is feeling like staying in bed and Peggy has to tell me, you have to go because you're the pastor. You know, I'm going to say, I'm glad you told me that. 
I'm glad when they said unto me, somebody has to tell you. I'm the one telling you right now, right? I was glad when they said unto me, I, I, why was I glad? Because my flesh felt that way? No, because I made a choice. We're talking about choosing the anointing. I made a choice that one day, you know, in the presence of the Lord, is better than a thousand elsewhere. Just like the psalmist. Just like the psalmist. You know, I listen to the voice of my spirit and of my knowing of the Lord. Hallelujah. And now make the choice. If I have to come to the house of the Lord, like the psalmist also said, I will offer unto the Lord sacrifices of praise. Hallelujah. I'll bring it as a sacrifice if I have to. If it's costing me, I will bring it. Are you all hearing this? Because that's a place that if I unite there in that place, the oil, the anointing is going to be coming down. Hallelujah. It's going to be coming down. And it, it mentioned the, the, the beard of, of, of the high priest. Is like the oil that flowed down the beard. You know, uh, I got a little bit of beard. I'm not bragging. But it, it, I couldn't grow a beard when I was 12. Amen. I couldn't grow a beard when I was two years old, right? But the beard indicates that I've been matured in some way. Oh, do you understand? So we that are mature in some way, the anointing is meant to drip from your life and unto the life of others. Not everybody's going to feel this way. Not everybody's going to be glad to come to church. Everybody else, as a matter of fact, is going to be trying to distract you every which other way. Amen. But you that are already mature, that's what the beard dripping down you know, from, from Aaron's beard, the oil dripping down, you know, it represents maturity. Somebody want to be mature in the house of the Lord. Somebody want to grow up. Somebody is a part of the remnant of God. You're here to represent so many others. Let the anointing flow through you. Let the anointing drip through you. Hallelujah, no matter what. Praise be to God. You seek unity. That's your choice. You seek a unity that connects you with the power of God. You have made the right choice. It's going to flow through you. Let that flow through you. You know, be what speaks in your life, what makes choices in your life. You know, make decisions in your life. And people are going to hear about it. Your family is going to hear about it. You know, some people, you know, they, 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 they want the anointing when the, when the pressure comes on. Just like that woman with the issue of blood, right? She tried the doctor. She spent all her money. She was on, 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 on her last ounce of strength. And the Bible says, you know, that she crawled through the crowd, right? I tell you what, you're getting a faith that's going to make you, no matter what, uh, the weakness is in your flesh. It's going to make you, you know, approach Jesus and, and the anointed one, hallelujah. The Bible says that she moved herself through the crowd and she touched the hem of, of the garment of Jesus Christ, right? And what happened? What, happened? what did Jesus say? The Bible says that he felt power. He felt virtue come out of him, right? And he turned and he said, who touched me? And the disciples said, well, there's a whole bunch of people here touching you. No, I felt power come out of me. I'm telling you that when you got this kind of faith already injected in you and already speaking in you, you're going to connect to the anointing of God, that power. That's the way you want to connect with power that comes out of the Christ and flows through you and touches your wound and touches your need. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Because people can, I mean, they were touching Jesus in the flesh, but somebody came and tapped into the anointing of the power of Christ. And it flowed out of him and it stopped that issue of blood. And it raised her up from what was going to kill her. Do you understand? You want to connect to the flow. You want to connect to the power of Jesus, the Christ. There were a lot of people around him. There were even a lot of people following him like they are in religion and in tradition and in say so or whatever. But that's not going to break the yoke of bondage. We need something. Woo! I believe that's why the Lord sent this word. We need something that will touch the Lord. That he can use us. 
so he and his pockets. I feel my virtue. Somebody touched me. Somebody touched me. The woman was afraid, right? Because a woman with an issue should not be touching nobody. It was a curse. And the old law said she must be stoned to death. She was scared, rightfully so. But guess what? It was because that woman was unclean and would contaminate anything that she touched. But she could not contaminate the anointing. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, she could not make unholy what was holy in our Christ. Instead, our holy Jesus made her whole. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Touch on the power in the name of Jesus. No matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter what curse is in your family or in your life, we're going to break that yoke because the Lord said that the yoke, it shall be broken. The cycle shall be broken. The generational curse shall be broken. Is it drunkenness? Is it divorce? Is it immorality? Is it abuse? Is it, what is it? We'll break it in the name of Jesus. We'll break it in the name of Jesus. We're believing right now. We're believing in the anointing of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You see what the Lord started when he led you out of Egypt. He intends to finish. Can we stand up in the house of the Lord? What the Lord started, he said, I'll do as the days as I did in Egypt. And I'll do as I did at the Mount of Oreb in Midian. Amen. We got out of Egypt, but there was still Midian up ahead. There was still Cana up ahead, right? But the Lord do it again. What he started in your life, the enemy's been mocking, right? The enemy's been landing his blows or whatever. But what he started, he intends to finish because he that began a good work in you, he that began a good work with you, in you, is going to finish, he's going to perform, he's going to perfect it until the day he comes. How's he going to do it? Well, we're going to connect to the anointing of God. In Zechariah 4, 6, you know, that famous scripture, Time when they had been brought back from Babylon, the remnant, they were a remnant. He said, I'll bring a remnant, just like you all been brought out of your sin, you know. And, and, and they've been brought back, and, and they were rebuilding the temple because we're, we're trying to rebuild something here that started in the time of the book of Acts. Do you understand? We, we, we've been asking the same as Gideon, where are the miracles? I need a miracle for this. I need a miracle for that. I need a miracle for my son. And I need a miracle for the own mess that I got myself into. Or whatever, you know. Right? And wrong, wrong choice, so just repent. We need a miracle. Somebody need a miracle in some area of your life. A miracle for somebody in your life. A miracle that's not so much about you, but about somebody you love. Amen? But I'll tell you what, uh, you're doing right because you're loving like Peggy preached the other night. You're loving what God loves. Amen. You got it right there. Zechariah comes with the people of God. He's been working hard to rebuild the temple. You know, to bring back the people from their bondage in Babylon. And they've been allowed as a remnant and he's been working hard and the devil's been mocking. You know, and another servant named Joshua, you know, he's had to fight and Zechariah's had to pray and work on the temple. And the Lord answered and spoke unto him saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, yes, say the Lord. Yes, it's true, we're weak. Amen. And our, our might is little. But by my spirit, says the Lord. Who art thou, O great mountain? That's your issue. That's bigger than you. Amen. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before the Rubabel, thou shalt become flat, a plain. And he shall bring forth. Remember the sound of the anointing? That's how it sounds too. He shall bring forth. Get ready to say it for your own mountain. Because this is the way you're going to flatten it. He shall bring forth with shouts of grace. Grace. Hallelujah. Going to be shouting. It's not a child of my power. It's a child of his grace. It's a child of what I don't deserve. 
It's a child of what he did for me. It's a child. Declares how much he loves what I love even more than I love it. Child of grace. I didn't earn it. But I'm going to flatten that mountain. <laughs> it's not by my mind, not by my power, but by his spirit. Yeah. They've been telling you not you, but it's by grace. Yeah. It would be all of us. Oh, well, I don't know that much, but I'm by grace. But shouts of grace. When you shout grace, the devil knows that you know. The devil knows that you know. You know the love of God. You know the mercies of God. You know what Jesus did. You know how he took your place so that you wouldn't be condemned. So that you wouldn't be disqualified. So that the devil couldn't stand against you and tell you you don't deserve it. You're saying I don't. Grace. Grace. You'll be flattened, you mountain. Mountain of unbelief, you're flat in the name of Jesus. Mountain of sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. The anointing flow, because it's by the Spirit, says the Lord. It's by my Spirit, says the Lord. By my Spirit. It's because, oh yeah, Zerubbabel had laid the foundation just like the Lord has laid a foundation in your heart of salvation. But the Lord comes and, and, and he tells them, Hallelujah. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. That thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Oh, harabashim. Thank you, Father. Thank you, for Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your anointing, Lord. Let us connect to your anointing and your holy power that we would never earn. We would never be able to deserve. But it's by grace we declare, we decree, we shout a sound. Uh, that is an anointed sound. Oh, it will flatten every mountain and destroy every barrier and break every chain. Because your word has declared that the anointing shall break the yoke of bondage. Oh, how we tear down idolatry. We tear down doubt and unbelief. We tear down anything that has taken your place, Lord. Right now we tear it down. In the name of Jesus, and we build an altar. We build an altar. Yes, in our heart, Lord. We build an altar for you, Lord. Only you are worthy. Right now, if you have not given your life to Jesus, right now where you stand, just say, Jesus, you are Lord. You are God. You are the only one that died for my sins. You're the only one that rose from the dead for me. I confess you, Jesus, as the Christ, and Lord of my life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you're the Christ. Thank you, Jesus, that what you've begun in me, oh, you will finish it. You'll perfect it. Zerubbabel laid the foundation. His hands shall also finish it. God has laid the foundation, and his hands shall also finish it. God has come into your house and he's going to raise it up every, every member of your family right now. As you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're finding out it's more than, than a few words in the scripture. It's about connecting to the anointing of the Spirit of God. It's about the miracles that you don't know how God's going to do them, but you're, you know he's a God of miracles. He already did a great miracle in your life. He's already laid the foundation. And it's only to build on it. It's only to build on it. It's only because you're a remnant, you know. Some people here are here for a hundred people. Some are here for, for more than that. Hallelujah. And right now you can see your family. But the Lord is saying there's so much more. There's so much more. So much more than what you think. Somebody came last night and told me something like that. So you said, you've, you've been hurt by people you don't even know. And they've come. 
to the Lord in other places. There was a mother whose children were, were not in this house, but there some other churches, whatever, that weren't there before. I don't know how God's going to do it, but he's a God of miracles. Hallelujah. We're going to partake of the Lord's Supper. Beginning by the instruction of the ushers over in the back. You can come in. As you are mature in the Lord, you're grown up. You receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Not just your Savior, your Lord and Savior. Amen. Not your religion. Not your tradition. Not your 45 minutes on Sunday. Your Lord. Your Savior. It means He's your King. The voice that you listen to. Hallelujah. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Touch upon the needs of your people today in the way that you desire, Father. Come, Father. Oh, Harabasu did it. You worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Mm, let every action be an action of faith. Let every move towards God. Every step in His direction is something that His Spirit wants to anoint and empower. Oh, He is so awesome. He is so awesome. I can only remember me as I said that. Day I cried out. I wasn't in the church, I was in a truck. The day I cried out. I was surprised last night, people knew the date I was saved. I remember that day quite often because it was so amazing. And I can't relive that day, go on to the rest of my life. I, I touched on that day that the foundation was laid in my heart. And it seemed like one step, one cry, you know, caused him to cross the Milky Way and all the galaxies to come and save me. And I gotta tell you, one step in his direction can do so much. One choice, when he tells you to go right, you don't go left, one step like that going to connect you to a power of his favor. I know this because he did it for me that day. It was so actual, it was so manifest. It was so awesome that God would. I had done nothing for him. Nothing at all. Matter of fact, I didn't even take a physical step. It was just in my heart that I turned cried out to him didn't even know how to pray and there he seemed like he came from the farthest place after so many years of running from him thought I had left him so far behind because that's what I, my last thought as a sinner was was something like look at how far I've come as I saw what I had become. But he wasn't too far. Or he came from so far just to meet my needs and to forgive me and to save me. He's the same God. He's the same Jesus right now. And I believe that as you step towards him in faith, 
He covers so much distance to help you. He moves so much more than we could ever move, but it's, let every step, let every prayer, let every praise, let every thought, because he wants to anoint your thoughts, you know, be saturated with the anointing of God to be used of God. As it happens, you know, as you begin their fear, go away. I believe our church is a remnant church. That's why I've never cared really about size, but just about the anointing. We've been here few in prayer night. The anointing is here. You know, and because of that, I believe you're here by a divine appointment of God. You're here. You're here to be used of God. You're here because you represent a lot more than what you see in the mirror. You're here because when you pray an anointed prayer to the Lord, He's going to cover so much ground. He's going to cover so many people. That's what the anointing of God does. More than your eye could see. Certainly more than your hands could do. Hallelujah. Let there be this kind of faith, like I called it, in your faith knower. In your faith knower. You know the anointed one. You know the Christ. That's whose name you're using. Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he tells you today, whatever you bind, bind those enemies that are trying to hurt your family. Whatever you bind on earth, I bind that sickness in the name of Jesus. Whatever you bind on earth, I bind that enemy that's trying to destroy that life. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Bind you. Give you the keys, he said. And whatever you lose, I just see the anointing flowing right there. Whatever you lose, whatever you release, the Christ is flowing through you. The same anointing that touched that woman, whether it's your blood flowing through you. Whatever you lose, whatever you release on earth, it's being released from heaven right now. From right, right now, that yoke breaking anointing that sister the name of Jesus those sisters those loved ones in the family in the name of Jesus that brother in the name of Jesus you're here because of them you represent more the Lord said he'd bring a remnant back you're that remnant you're that remnant we're not here to play church we're here to be used of God it's important what we're doing it's powerful. It's in the spirit. It's in the unseen. But it's more powerful than anything that is seen. Every circumstance is subject to change. It's temporary. But what's in the spirit is eternal. Ah, that's why it reached our lives 2,000 years after Jesus released it. Because it's forever Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, For I received of the Lord that which I also have delivered unto you, that on the night that the Lord was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, this is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may take the bread. There's healing. There's healing for your flesh, for your mind, for your spirit. Your hurts that are deeper than your flesh in the name of Jesus. Deep down hurts. Let them be healed. You need to be healed. Just let the Lord do it. Hallelujah. In the same manner, he took wine. 
as I see blessed it, he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood that is shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me because as often as you take this bread and you drink this cup, my death do you remember until I return. Raise that cup up. It's to you, Jesus, the Christ in my life. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for empowering this moment of faith to be used for your will. Thank you. You may take the cup. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, I worship him for a moment. Just savor the presence of the Lord. After this, I'm going to allow one of the ministers to come up and take up the offering. Oh, Harabachate. Worship him for a moment. Sound. Let the lanterns 
break. Let the light shine. Let it pierce the darkness. Let it break the chain. Let it divide the enemy. Let it flow. Yes. 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 Heal. Open the eyes. Let them cry out. Yes, he is. And he lives in you. And he's rising up. Oh, Rabasete, Rebacaria, Basete. Oh, Rabasete, Rebacaria. Get ready. Get ready for this very presence and essence and anointing that you feel at this altar today to arise in you. In your house, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, in your prayer, in your car, be sensitive. Be sensitive to the presence of the Lord. Be sensitive. If He wakes you up at night, don't be worried about praying a prayer in the middle of the night and just making a sound that releases the anointing. Because to the enemy is going to sound like a trumpet that says the Lord has arrived upon this battle. The Lord is here. The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. You may not feel like a mighty man, but that's what the Lord calls you. Like he called Gideon. And he said, the Lord is with you, arise mighty man of valor because it's not about how you feel it's about the Lord that never changes his mind it's about the Lord that sees you for what he's called you to be arise mighty man of valor even you feel like you're the only one yeah that's God's design too for he chose a remnant he chose a few to save so many. At times he chose one man, like Moses, to lead six million through the desert. So know that he can choose you. When you feel alone, you're not alone. The angel of the Lord will tell you, Arise, mighty man of valor, mighty woman of valor. Arise, because the Lord is with you. And you will set the enemy to flight. And you will obtain the victory. Yes. You will divide the strategy. And you will destroy the plan of every enemy. When we touch agreeing and believing, we're touching on that unity right now that makes the anointing of God flow. And He's commanding. It's His command a blessing and of everlasting life. You're in a powerful place. You're in a powerful, powerful place. I feel it right now. No nation, no Pentagon, no nuclear weapons have the power that the anointing of God gives you in the name of Jesus. Hold on to that power. The devil's a liar. He lied to some of you. That's why Zechariah reminded you that it's by shouts of grace. You know why? Because the enemy always tries to say you don't deserve it. Because the enemy always tries to say you're powerless. But with shouts of grace, you'll flatten the mountains. With shouts of grace, you'll make it plain. 
you'll level it out and you'll get through because God will make a way God will make a way and you will flourish in the courts of the Lord and you will bring forth whatever age you are you will flourish in the courts of your God hallelujah 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 oh we bless you Jesus thank him today thank him because he's good he's never forgotten you keep the flow in every choice you make keep it flowing in every decision you make ask yourself is this something God can use if I would go this way instead of that way you know because the anointing is part of your choice on what you choose to be in the presence of the Lord you made the right choice today to be in the house of God to come together in unity with the brethren it's that easy it's that easy it's that clear in the Bible to touch agreeing with the promise even when the enemy tries to disqualify you go to the word amen go to Jesus go to his word amen we thank the Lord we thank the Lord we're gonna pick up the offering I uh, I guess I apologize for taking so long but is it all right do you forgive me give me that for pastor's day <laughs> hallelujah I met you fly on that's why it took so long y'all spoiled me I thank God for you I can't say it enough times I'm going to pray for your offering, then Marty's going to close the service. But Father, we pray for this offering. We ask you bless it, Father. Lord God, thank you for the new job that our brother Lopez got. Thank you for the promotions. Thank you, Lord, for the increase. Thank you, Lord, because you make your people to overabound for every good work. Thank you, Father, because you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. In Jesus' name, I'm going to say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's all right, Pastor. I just felt that it was that game that you would see like basketball and they were going on overtime and you were like excited because you're like, is he going to make it? What team is going to make it? And then that team, which is the Spurs, finally throw the ball and make it in the net. I'm here to tell you, you have victory. Victory in the name of Jesus. Hey, you know what? I know that I got more excited for the overtime on the basketball. Let's give the Lord a praise offering like he won. Like you won. Like you won. So you, there's no need to ask for forgiveness, uh, Pop, because we were in overtime and it was an exciting game. Amen. I was, uh, I'm going to get my notes up. I do have uh, quite a few. Uh, announcements. Uh, do I have Joette and Brother Dewan? Oh, there's Brother. Okay. Come on up here, Brother Dewan. Oh, Brother Zion and Brother Dewan. Come on up. Good morning. I want to share with you uh, first, God is really moving in our youth, like doing some awesome things. Amen. And we just had a, uh, we went to a concert last week, and during that concert, one of our youth actually gave her life to the Lord. Um, at that concert, a friend of mine uh, gave us out these books, they're called The Life Book. And what it is, is the book of John, it has 21 chapters. Starting next week, what we're going to do is called the 21 Day uh, Book of John uh, Challenge. So we're going to be handing these out to our youth next week. And what we're asking uh, parents, if you can help us out, is uh, as we're doing this 21 Day Challenge with our youth, if you can maybe have some conversations, maybe you can follow along with them as well in the book of John. So each day what they'll do is read a new chapter. And inside the book basically it has commentaries from some teenagers, um, kind of just uh, what their comments are on this book. And it's really good. I believe it'll be life changing. And so we challenge you as well for the 21 day challenge starting next Sunday. I also want to bring in my brother Zion. He has another announcement. Uh, uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Brother Zion. Um, Tonight, we, we are having our youth night tonight. Uh, we are inviting um, all, uh, all the youth of middle school and high school uh, to come out with us tonight and just share in God's word and play some games with us and just have fellowship tonight. Um, 
God is moving in these. He, he, he is moving. He is, he is uh, impacting him in, in, in ways that it's just, it's just amazing to, to, to see. Um, but yes, tonight is the youth night. Um, doors open at 6, and we will be here. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So uh, youth night tonight at 6 o'clock. And also, um, young ladies, we have our uh, young ladies meet up this Friday at 7 p.m. here in the house of the Lord. So if you are young and you are a young lady, come on over. Uh, we'll be here. We're going to be pondering the word of God. It's so cute. We have coffee and snacks and everything like that. It's really nice. So if you want more information, um, you can go to the information booth. But we'll be here on Friday, um, October 7th at 7 p.m. So if you have a daughter or a niece that you would want them to come, um, bring them and they'll be here with us. Also, the the... The event that I want to and I want to start announcing is our harvest night. We are having harvest night. We're going to have like a chunk or treat outside here in our parking lot. Oh, yes. Oh, there's my husband. I was wondering where he was at. Uh, so it's going to be, it's one of our, like our biggest events here, our biggest community event. So if you want to participate in that in any way, last year we had 20 cars participating. And this year we're going to have our very own brother, Dewan Watkins. He's going to be ministering that evening. Where did he go? I go, oh, there he is. Okay, there he is. Um, I don't know if you know, but he ministers in music and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be an, an amazing night, October 31st. Yes, it's a Monday night. It's going to start at 7 p.m. So Oh, thank you. Donate candy. Did you hear, brother? But if you want to uh, have a, a vehicle for that night and you want to participate in that area, let us know. Please sign up in the in the information booth and uh, we'll get you situated. Leave your name and your number. Um, so also the, uh, the cantata, every time I, I keep on forgetting, but it's October 8th, uh, which is Saturday at 7 p.m. Um, oh, I do have a need. And every time I, it seems like if I announce it up here, everybody's like, yes. So I, I'm so excited. So I'm excited to get this need filled in the house of the Lord. Um, I need somebody who is social media savvy. I want to get our social media working for our church. And um, even though I look at Facebook a lot, I just don't know how to do all of that. So if you are wanting to uh, be a uh, be a part of the church and help in that area and you can and you feel like hey sister Marty, i can do it let me know please come and see me um so we can uh, get connected and we can go on from there so i'm going to go ahead and pray and uh, we are going to dismiss heavenly father i thank you i thank you father for your presence i thank you lord father for your word lord i thank you for what you have done this morning father for setting the captives free for aligning us to your word, Lord. I know, God, that you are a faithful God and that you are faithful, Father, to the word that you have given us this morning. And, Father, as we go out, Lord, Father, from this building, that we we will not go out of your presence because it's in your presence where there is a fulfillment of joy, of peace, Lord, Father, of what we need, Lord, as we go to our homes, Lord, Father. May we feel you and experience you there too, Lord. May when we go to our work, we Lord, that, that people will look at us and see that there is something different, Father, and that we will be able to tell them that the difference is you, Lord, Father, that we have been in the presence of the I Am, that we have seen you move in our lives, that we have felt you, Lord, Father, and I pray right now, Lord, as we go out, Lord, that you will bless, Lord, Father, them as they go out. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. So if you want to sign up for Harvest Night, uh, please go to the information.